Well, good morning, everybody. It is uh, three minutes three past yeah. the hour. Um, so I think we're going to get started. Um, I'd like to thank you all for attending and um, I'm going to review what the committee focus is because I see that we do have some new attendees. So the TransCAC is an industry focus group that exists to discuss short range concerns regarding the DBE program, um, address sustainability matters and develop recommendations to achieve DBE program goals in the context of WSDOT policy. Specific goals are to improve communication, help remove barriers to participate, and increase DBE capacity. Um, as we get going this morning, I'm going to, uh, uh, Tondra is not able to join us because she's at the AASHTO conference this week. Um, so you guys get me. Um, we're going to do the welcome and the roll call. And then um, we're going to be introducing our new DBE program chief, Taisha Fleming, who goes by Ty. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. Um, I'm going to call on your name, and if you could just please introduce yourself, quick couple seconds um, overview of who you are, what you do, and then we'll move on to the next. And then I'll turn it over to Ty, and then we'll formally start the meeting. So if everybody's good with that, and Drew Kowski, Andy, good morning. Could you start us off, please? Uh, yeah, good morning, everyone. Andy Kowski, I work at HNTV Corporation. We're a consulting firm with offices in Milwaukee, Madison, and Green Bay. Um, I'm our WSDOT client service leader, and most relevant to this group, we're HNTV is part of a mentor-protege relationship with Span and Associates, a DBE firm, and uh, I, I manage that that mentor protege relationship. So good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shannon Clary. Shannon, you're on mute. Hi. Oh, there yeah. You go. Uh, on the mute button. Um, I'm Shannon Clary. I am part of the Bureau of Aeronautics. And I do the DBE program for the Bureau of Aeronautics and work with the uh, OBAC office on matters for DBE. So um, we do our own DBE three-year goal setting. Uh, we do the uniform reports and we do all of our submissions to FAA and outreach for the airport communities. So... I'll be in the office. Um, I'm in the office on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I'll try to come by and, and meet you if you're available. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bros. Make sure I unmute. Uh, I'm Dave Bros with EMCS. I'm actually at our Milwaukee Thank office. You. Um, in addition to my EMCS role, um, I've been on TransCAC for many, quite a few years. I am also the ACEC rep to TransCAC, so I'm wearing a couple hats as part of this committee. Thank you. Del Brazil. Yes, my name. Good morning, everyone. My name is Del Brazil. I'm the owner of Apex Consulting Engineers. Uh, we have our corporate headquarters in uh, Chicago. We recently opened the office last year in Milwaukee, and um, we're a DBE firm with the WSDOT, and uh, we recently just joined ACEC Wisconsin, and we're hoping to develop a relationship with WSDOT and all the other firms in, in Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ilya Ayes? Yes, hi. Uh, I'm Ilya Ayes. I work for a small DBE in Minneapolis called PE <laughs> Services. And uh, I've worked with Madalena over the last couple of years, and she's got us acclimated to doing business in Wisconsin. And uh, we now have a couple of projects that we're working on, mainly inspection and testing. And we also um, are working out of the Northwest office in Eau Claire doing project coordination. So thanks. Thank you. Harvin and Singh. Hello everyone, Harvin Singh with Singh & Associates. We are a longtime uh, DBE firm, WBE firm in Milwaukee, and we had a very successful mentoring arrangement with Grafe, and uh, we like to support uh, the DBE programs, and I'm happy to be here. 
Thank you. Michael Holker. I'm Michael Holker. I'm DOT uh, Bureau of Product Development Director. So overseeing design, construction, consulting, all shebang. Thanks, Michael. Thank Keisha Sutton. Good morning, everyone. I am with Prism Technical. We are DBE. We um, work pretty closely with Roslyn um, on the summit and um, several other projects, but happy to be here. Thank you. Ms. Lobdell. Good morning. My name is Kim Lobdell. I'm the CEO of KL Engineering. We were a DBE for probably about 30, 31 years. We have um, graduated from the program. Um, we are a mem I have been a member of TransCAC, I think, since it was started from the very beginning. So I have a lot of history and have been through a lot of the the different iterations on things. We are also one of the technical consultants um, for the DBE staff. We do provide some support staff for the, the annual meeting we, and for supporting the DBE office in terms of contractor payments, good faith efforts, and a bunch of other things, whatever they really need our help with at the time. We are also in the Mentor Protege program currently, and we are mentoring uh, M squared um, on, on different aspects of design so that they can get um, more involved in the WISDOT procurement process. Thank you, Kim. Madalena Maestri. Well, hello, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, so, as you know, I'm now the Civil Rights Program Manager for Federal Highways, so happy to still stay connected with you. Very big welcome to Ty. Um, Thank you. Who's got a great team to work with, super dedicated director, so um, happy to be part of this journey as we all keep moving forward together. Thank you, Madalena. Thank you. Minal Ha. Good morning, I'm Minal Ha with Unscored Engineering. Um, let's see, a civil engineering firm, a DBE, and we are currently in a mentor protege with uh, KL Engineering. And also we provide DBE support services and we have been for quite a while for WISDOT. I think that covers it. Thanks, Minal. Kathleen Panic. Hello, everyone. My name is Kathleen Panic. I work in the DBE office. I am uh, the Good Faith Effort Analyst, but along with some other duties, I also coordinate the TransCAC meeting, um, get the minutes ready, the agenda ready, and I also oversee uh, the, uh, the CUF monitoring for the consultants as well. I kind of oversee that process as well. So um, thank you and uh, welcome, Ty. Thank Again. you, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kathleen. Um, Mitch Patoka. Hello, uh, Mitch Patoka with the Bureau of Project Development Consultant Services section. Um, I help with the DBE achievement tracking. Thanks, Mitch. Thank uh, Mr. Crump, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, I'm Randy Crump. Uh, I don't know if you guys can, oh, there we go. Um, I'm a uh, founder, CEO of Prism Technical. Um, to be honest, Prism Technical Management and Marketing Services. We don't usually say our full name, but it really is the reason why we are doing so much outreach and inclusion work today. We started strictly as a, a monitor and an inclusion consultant. First project, Miller Park or American Family Field. We have done DBE inclusion on a number of projects, including working with Mike Duckett many years ago on the market interchange. Um, and uh, we did the goal setting for the Milwaukee streetcar and uh, do a lot of work uh, uh, on vertical construction. Most of Milwaukee's iconic buildings we have been involved in are early work. And still today we do a lot of vertical construction, but we're doing a tremendous amount of public outreach through Keisha's efforts. You got to mention RISE. Yep. Thank you. I was going to say uh, the RISE program, which 
which grew out of early relationship in Rosalind's first life when she was over at the YW CA and uh, we created a business training program and eventually rise at the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewers District. And that is an engineering internship program, which stands for Regional Internships in Science and Engineering. Uh, for those of you who, who know Milwaukee Business Journal, the recent listing of 40 under 40 included three RISE graduates. Congratulations. Um, Rosalind Roberson. Hello, everybody. My name is Rosalind Roberson, and I am the DBE Support Services Coordinator, Civil Rights Urban Outreach Strategist. I oversee the DB Support Services. That includes the Mentor Protege Program, the Move Loan Program, and even and any other support that we can provide to our DBEs that give us a call. I also oversee, or I like to call myself the hub for the annual uh, DBE Summit, because uh, I give a lot of the credit to my consultants. Um, I come up with a good idea that I pass on to a consultant and they make it, they bring it to life. Um, so let me see, am I missing? Oh, and I also, my baby is the uh, uh, putting together the DB reporter. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that later on this afternoon. Thank you, Russ. Anna Wiesner, good morning. Hi, good morning. I'm Anna Wisner. I'm with the DOT. I'm the consultant services section chief. Um, so I work with with Mitch on all the consultant contracts um, that we have in the state. Thank you. And Marquise Young. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marquise Young, and I'm with the DBE program with WISDOT um, as the utilization engineer, um, deal with um, project with the modifications and um, other duties as well. So um, great to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Marquise. I don't believe anybody else jumped in while we were doing the self introductions. So I am going to turn it over to Ty. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting me to the meeting, Benji. I appreciate that. It's nice to, to finally see some faces. I've seen your names, um, but to put a face to a name is, is awesome. So I am the new uh, program chief here for DBE, formerly held by Madalena. I know I have some big shoes to fill. I'm so glad that you're still with us in some capacity, Madalena. I'm sure I can learn a ton from you. Um, my first day was actually Monday, so you guys probably know more about my responsibilities than I do at this point, but I'll be meeting with my team throughout the next couple of weeks to learn more about what they do um, in addition to, to some of my responsibilities. But for the most part, I'll be Tondra Davis's right hand and, and definitely learning a lot from her these last couple of days. So I'm excited to meet you all, excited to start working with you all, and feel free to reach out anytime. I, I, I'd appreciate that, learn more about you guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ty, and, and a big welcome to Thanks, the yeah. DBE program as our new chief. Um, so, like I said, I don't think anybody else has popped in, um, so we can officially start the rest of the meeting. Uh, the first thing is I'd like to request a motion to approve last uh, meeting's minutes. Do I have someone? So moved. Okay, great. Anybody second? second. Just Kim Love, double second. Thank you very much, Kim. Okay, um, so we're going to move on to item topic number two, which is consultant services update with Anna and Mitch. I think we have to vote first, Benji, on the approval oh. of the minutes. Oh, didn't we get a second? Oh, we got a second, but you still have to vote. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm <laughs> everybody um, in favor of approving the minutes. Say aye. 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 Thank you very much. And now I'll turn it over to Anna and Mitch. All right. Very good. Um, we didn't have any uh, general update for today, but Mitch, I believe you have an update for the attainment. Sure. So. Um, for our overall attainment, uh, first looking at contracts that have been executed so far this federal fiscal year, um, we continue to uh, execute at a 
fairly decent clip. Um, so through the end of March, we had approximately 160 or 163 million dollars of total contracts of that a uh, little over 67 million dollars of federal funding. Um, with roughly $8 million of that funding going to DBE firms, um, which brings us to just under uh, so 11 and three quarter percent for our DBE achievement. Looking forward at what's still left uh, that we expect to be coming in this federal fiscal year. Um, currently anticipating about a hundred and eighty nine million dollars. Uh, more of contracts executed with about $61 million of federal funding. Um, we do have DBE goals on the East West project uh, that we anticipate those contracts coming through soon. Um, and based on what is out there, um, we're anticipating about a 16% achievement on the remaining contracts to give us a total for the year of approximately uh, 13 and three quarter percent total. Um, any questions on our consultant DBE achievements so far this year? Maybe it'll um, come up later, but do you expect to be setting any other goals on projects yet before the end of this fiscal year? Um, we're Currently evaluating uh, solicitations as they come up. Um, we did set a couple of additional goals on um, the I-41 contract oversight um, near Appleton. Um, those contracts won't be executed until uh, federal fiscal 25, so they aren't showing up here. Um, but yes, we will continue to evaluate opportunities as they arise. Yeah, and there were a couple of projects in, was it this last solicitation that had some DBE uh, percentage um, or DBE dollars that were um, as, assigned on those projects as well? Yep. Yeah, it those was, were. It was the last one, right? The last solicitation? Yes, um, those were the construction oversight and interviews for those will be happening next week. Awesome. Great. Okay, anything else for consultant services, updates or otherwise? Nope, I don't think so. Thanks, Mitch, for the summary. I guess if there's any questions, we'll be open to those. Okay, seeing no hands, um, we can move on to agenda number three, which is the DBE program updates. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the uh, DBE, or I'm sorry, the attainment report here real quick. All right, let me know for sure that you can see it. Yes. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so this is the DBE attainment report through the April letting. Um, modifications have been processed through March 31st, and the consultant figures are also um, through March 31st. So our overall federal funding and attainment right now, we have 609.5 um, million in federal funds for construction and consulting year to date. Our DBE commitments for consulting um, are right around um, 9.8 million. Oh. I'm sorry, this is, for some reason, this is not the right number. I have to adjust that. Whatever Mitch said, that's what it is. <laughs> but the final numbers are correct. DBE commitments right now, including the uh, modifications that have been processed through March 31st, uh, we're sitting at 61.7 million, almost 61.8 million. So our total construction and uh, consultant commitments um, tally up to about $71.6 million in commitments. Our overall DBE attainment uh, through, um, as I said, the April let and modifications and consultant figures 
through the end of March is 11.76. So we are really tracking in the positive direction. We do anticipate to um, for the first half of the federal fiscal year, once we finish doing um, some more of our commitment modifications, um, that we will uh, reach our, our goal or be very, very close to it. Um, I did want to break down a little bit further on this report. We usually break down the construction at let. We had 53 million. We have 8 million in contract mods after execution, contract execution, which gives us our 61.8 million right now. Our Fed funds, um, we're working at, at about 825 million for construction Fed funds, um, 129 million for the consultant Fed funds for a total of about 954. I do want to stress and please note that these numbers do change monthly determined by lettings, DBE commitment mods, and federal funding updates. Does anyone have any questions on this? Okay, the other thing I wanted to share was um, I wanted to show you where we're sitting for our um, specific projects that we're using. And so this is um, the State Highway 20 project. Um, this is our consulting. Uh, we had 15.12% of total consulting. Um, we had 43% provided by our uh, minority and 57% by non-minority. The breakdown for construction, um, the goal was 15% right now. Um, achievement year to date was 34.57% or $3.5 million. We had um, a great um, array of different firms and different uh, work types that were working on this project. And as you can see, we had you know Native Americans, Hispanic, male and female, non-minority trucking, minority trucking, Black American um, for trucking and also for traffic control. And then as we move to the zoo, um, this was the North leg, 10.99% um, of total consulting, 40% by uh, minority Black con um, consulting and, and then 60% was non-minority. And then we move into our breakdown again for um, what the construction was. We had a 15% goal on it year to date. We have 18.27% or almost $30 million in DBE participation on this project, which is really great. And again, we have the breakdown of who participated on this project by ethnicity and percentage. I have a question. I have my yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, I'm I, sorry. I go, can't see it. Yeah, either. that's all right. Can you go back two slides where you were you talking about the State Chunk Highway 20 in Racine and then the North Leg? And then on the top of those, you have consulting. I, uh, is this all construction? I, I, I'm confused by your heading on the top of those slides. I believe it is construction oversight. Can you go back? Yeah, Thanks. hopefully. So what? Yeah, sorry. The um, like on the next on the on the the other uh, next one. Yeah. So ten point nine nine of total consulting. What I don't understand what you mean by that. Of total, what total of what consulting? What's the whole? What's and is that actually consulting or is this all? construction and contracting. I believe the way this is written up that it is 10.99% of um, construction oversight. Um, Madeline, I might have to defer to you on this because you normally present this. So I believe it's construction oversight. So the yeah, and I, I it can be confusing, right? Because we're talking about construction of the actual building mm -hmm. of the projects versus the professional services contracting. So right. anything that's saying total consulting is going to be anything that came through 
Anna's group. Um, and so all professional services would be represented here. So I believe there is some design on this as well as construction oversight. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Kim, does that help? Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. So what do you I think? Can... Like if the whole consultant budget for the year is a hundred million dollars, this one project or is a, is you know, no. is 10, 11 no. percent of that? It's eleven percent of the total consulting, consulting. contract for this right. project. Okay. So that'll show so that where they were showing 35 percent of the construction that's of that construction contract for that project okay thank you and i would say it'd probably even be tied to that id if there were multiple ids on the contract that that percentage would be tied to that id okay okay thank you thanks for the question kim so the breakdown again of the the minority groups, the work type, male, female, and you can see um, we've had you know a nice increase here for our Hispanic American trucking, um, our minorities. Um, we had a lot of minority trucking on here for this project, and this this was a multi year project, big project. So I believe these numbers are as accurate as we have uh, through the date of this, this meeting. And then the next one is our I-43 project. And here we have taken all of the project IDs and put them together and done an average um, based because a lot of these projects are separate projects. Um, so the way they were presented to us is um, our DBE goal would have been 10%, 10.6% if you averaged all the project IDs. And right now they're coming in at 15.62% or over spread out through all of these projects. Um, there's 64.8 million in construction dollars that have been seen at this point. And again, we have our pie chart here of who's working on the projects and the percentage that they are participating at. And again, the breakdown, this, the parts of this project are still going on. So this will change on a monthly basis or every time well, it changes on a daily basis, but it'll be updated again when we have our next meeting. But again, these are all construction numbers that really have nothing to do with consulting. Is that correct? Um, for this particular one, yes, this last one, but the one prior um, does incorporate here the total, uh, you know, the 11% of total consulting dollars. Okay. okay. And that could include oversight and or professional services. Okay. And for consulting on this one, um, that information was not given to me for I-43. So the numbers that are reflected here are for construction participation. And I can ask for the next meeting to make sure that we do incorporate what consultant uh, participation on is on those jobs for our DBE uh, firms. So are there any questions on, on this? Benji, the numbers that are in parentheses, that's the number of the firms, like 62 for Black Americans, Asians, 19 firms. Is that what you, is that what that is? Yes. Okay. Yes. That is correct. Um, I, can I clarify right there? Yeah. Um, just to say that it's the number of, of um, contracts. contracts. So there might be Asian Pacific Americans, maybe five firms are having 19 contracts. Okay, that something makes like sense. that because that's 60, okay. 62 right. threw me off. <laughs> that right, that would be a pretty high number. But it was asked at some other meetings. Well, you know, it's it's hard to tell what's really in this fifty five or twenty three. So how many contracts are these firms actually getting? So that's that's the parenthetical. I 
And also, you also have to remember that um, contracts are, if you have a DBE sub under a DBE, that is only counted once. So. All right, if there aren't any further questions, we can move on to opportunities for DBE consultant participation. Um, we had, as I said, um, we were talking about earlier, there were um, projects that were assigned uh, DBE dollars in this last solicitation. And as far as um, moving forward, as Mitch and Anna said, that they are going to be reviewing projects as they come along to see what opportunities are there. Um, we do always stress um, and encourage our prime consultants, uh, even if there is no goal, to utilize our DBE firms. Um, they bring a lot to the table. And, you know, it can be an extension of your staff while you're working on a project, either in the design or construction oversight. Anna or Mitch, do you have anything else to add for potential opportunities coming up on the uh, consultant side? I don't. I don't know. OK, um, the other thing we had going on was the design build presentation. Um, ben was going to come in and give us that at 11 o'clock. Um, I can see if you can jump in earlier and we can um, I mean, start talking about industry issues, check in and announcements. I'll see real quick if you can jump in. And while we're waiting on that, um, Dave, would you mind giving us some updates from ACEC? Sure. Um, actually, I thought, you know, as we're talking about attainment and, um, and we looked at project, Mitch had mentioned on the east west that there was a goal established for the, the west portion and the east portion. I thought it'd be kind of nice if I could call on Andy to kind of list, uh, I believe they exceeded that or are really right around that and kind of yep. give a list of who the firms are that will be working on that project, which should, they're expecting notice to proceed here in May. So Andy, if you got a minute, you want to maybe update on some of those firms? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, the west leg of I-94 East West is actually the, the first major piece of design and the, and the first major letting right now. Uh, it'll be let in September of 2025. So. After our contract is signed, it will have to make a quick work of a, a, a final plan set. So we, um, the DBE goal on the design contract was five hundred thousand um, dollars. Our contract will be at six hundred ninety thousand dollars, so we're exceeding the the DBE goal. We have eight DBEs on the contract: uh, Beth Foy and Associates doing PI community traffic control. Um, we'll do traffic control for the borings that uh, Gestra will be doing. Another DBE firm. And then Span and Associates will be working on uh, roadway and structural design. Bloom will be working on drainage and uh, structural design. Uh, Prism will help with uh, public communications. Uh, RGE uh, will help with roadway design. And then the eighth firm is uh, Singh, who will be leading the lightning design. So we're really happy and pleased that um, you know we met and exceeded the DBE goal, and all these firms decided to partner with us. We're thankful for that and we're looking forward to getting the project started. Great. Thanks, Andy. I thought that was valuable to share. Um, from an ACEC perspective, not necessarily ACEC, but I do want to, for all the firms that are out there, just put a plug in on, on the utility relocation. We've got some changes on the utility side and how it's going to be delivered out in the field. And so I think it's important for especially if um, firms have construction staff, but also I think it's going to go into the design staff that uh, WISDOT posted a training video about a little over a week ago. I think it's valuable for, for your team, your, your members to sit through that virtual training and get up to speed with it because it is something that is definitely going to impact um, construction oversight 
and our responsibilities out in the field, but it's also going to trickle on into some of our uh, our designs and from a risk perspective. So I think it's it's important that you get us current and stay up to date with that uh, that process. So that's all I got. Thank you, Dave and Andrew. Thank Andy. Thank you very much for uh, sharing that information with us. Yeah, we're very excited to see that, and it sounds like you guys have a really good solid team. So. Kudos, awesome. Um, NAMAC, I don't see anybody on the list from NAMAC. So, I'm not seeing or hearing anything. Madalena, would you care to share some updates from FHWA? Sure. Um, one big one. I know you all have been waiting anxiously to find out when the DBE regulation uh, was going to be updated and released. You may recall that last year, I want to say in the spring perhaps, uh, the NPRM was out and that was the notice of the rule change and the um, proposed changes. So uh, those did get updated. They will go into effect um, next month in May. So uh, you can look through changes right now online if you are so inclined, uh, but the actual regulation itself is still showing the version that we've been working with since 2014 um, until May. And that's when the new one will be there. And so I will work with our uh, WIST.team team to um, you know, make the adjustments needed to comply with the new regulation. Uh, there's some time to do that, so it doesn't have to change immediately, but that'll be a process that uh, I know you'll be getting updates in here, um, and I'm looking forward to working with Ty on that. It will be our first project together. Um, so stay tuned on that. Um, if you're really interested, there are many webinars coming up. Um, I can tell you the majority of the changes don't impact the consultant um, realm. Um, but there, there are some supply related things that could sort of peripherally, um, but overall the DB program is going to need to, um, to look at that. So you'll, you'll get some updates there. Um, I did share, um, a page with you, Kathleen, um, to put up here. I, what I'm going to try to do for any of the stakeholder meetings is bringing something interesting from FHWA that maybe could be a resource to you. Um, one of the things I'm really doing is looking for funding wherever possible. Um, but this resource called Public Roads may or may not be familiar with, but there's a whole research arm of FHWA, of course, and this publication is one that uh, has quite a few different areas of focus for federal highways. And while I know we all get strapped for time in reading, this could be a good resource to just be going to look at, um, you know, what is federal highways keeping their eye on? And so you can look sort of in that articles area or there's a departments tab that shows um, also some other sort of what, what are we looking at? And so um, just thought this might be helpful to you and um, and maybe you'll learn something too, um, lifelong learning. So that's what I'm doing as I read these things. Um, there's one very intriguing one on innovative density profiling of asphalt pavement. So don't miss that one. Um, but otherwise, yeah, so check that out. And um, I guess I'll have some questions when we get to design build. Um, I know that at some point, the consultant prime newsletter went out. I don't know if it was ever shared with this group, but that's a nice publication that WSDOT does for uh, for consultants um, that you can get on the on the website where all those newsletters are. And Kathleen, if you don't mind sharing this link, then um, people can have this afterwards in the notes. And that's all for me. Absolutely, I will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Madalena. Um, so we still have a little bit of time before Ben can join us. Uh, so Rosalind, would you care to share some news from the DBE office? Yes, I would like to share my screen so that I can um, 
I want to kind of go over the newsletter that was just published for this spring, the DB Reporter. We um, highlighted the um, results from the annual event. We had uh, 362 uh, individuals registered and attend. Uh, so I wanted to kind of showcase that. Um, so it's on the newsletter. Then we also showcase our our um, our um, our Golden Shovel Award winners, and we got HNTB and NASA, Hoffman, Jacobs, Ignago, and Lakeside Engineers. So we wanted to showcase them a little bit. And then um, our move to the uh, our new office, and I got I'm just making some edits. I added um, Ty's phone number down here, so I added her name here. So uh, also we wanted to highlight some pictures, and we got we updating our Flickr. So I put all our Flickr um, pictures that it'll be on our Flickr software. So I'm going to add the link to that somewhere in this newsletter. Um, then our results from October, our, goal, our overall DB Gold Summer Report from October 2023 to March 2024, if you want to take a look at those. Um, then our uh, mentor protege pairs. This is the reason why I wanted to um, talk about this, because I want to put a, do a push for anyone who's interested in uh, being a mentor for our DB consultants. We already have KL Mentoring M Squared and HMTB with Span and Jacobs and LT Leon. And, and they are doing very well. So still want to kind of do a push for um, some more. Uh, I got, you know, I saw uh, Dave Bros MC, M, e -M -C -S. So if he's interested, please give me a call. We do have an article on what's that design build pilot program. So it's going to take time out to read this article, Rethinking DBE for Design Build. Um, that's a two-pager. Then reconstructing Interstate 94, East-West Corridor. We got like a one-pager on that one. Then we highlighted all of our um, newly certified DBE firms from January 2024 to March 2024. So we got a two-pager on WizDOT. And then we have a two-page on the Milwaukee, Milwaukee County certified firm. So you want to take a look at those. Uh, of course, our stakeholder meetings, more pictures. And then uh, we did a profile on Margaret. Maggie Gibbons, and then this is the highlight, our January 29th and 30th, uh, 2025 DB Summit Save the Date is out. So if you haven't uh, already saved those dates, please save them on your calendar. We are already doing our pre-planning with PRISM. That's all. Thank you, Roz. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to also um, talk about um, uh, Roslyn mentioned um, our new location, our Milwaukee DBE office. Uh, we moved out of there and we're temporarily relocated at the Southeast Region Office, uh, Barstow in Waukesha. Um, so we're up on the third floor. And, um, you know, if you're ever in the building, you know, let us know. We'll come say hi. And then one of the other things I also wanted to talk about, um, just as a friendly reminder, um, Kathleen mentioned that she does the cuff for consulting, and I just wanted to make sure that we want to remind everybody that the cuff reports are also required for our consultant component on DBE, um, uh, where DBEs are working on federally funded projects. So uh, we want to make sure that, um, you know, as primes, you guys are, are looking at that. Um, to make sure that those forms are filled in correctly and also our DOT partners on those projects. You know, if you guys are the leads, um, make sure that those cuffs are done. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to Kathleen or myself and we can help you work through it. Uh, so while we're waiting, what I'd like to do is open it up until Dave gets here. Um, in case you guys have anything you would like to share, any questions or things that you want to talk about. Um, Andy, you gave us a great um, overview of what's going on with that contract for uh, part of the I-94 East-West. Anything else you would like to share? Andy, are you there? Okay, maybe we'll come back to Andy. Shannon, anything from you guys over at? Um... Hey, I'm. I'm uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I was trying to. I had a double mute on my phone and on my car. So. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was just we were just looking for a roundtable update. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're waiting for Ben. You got anything oh, fun yeah, and exciting? Um, 
Yeah, you know, you know, I talked about I-94 East West before. You know, yep. we're, we're really looking forward to that. And I should also mention that um, Jacobs, uh, EMCS, and Kapoor are our other partners on that on that project. Um, you know, relative to Metro Protege with with Span, you know, we we act, we had a uh, we have a DBE and uh, in, in design build session coming up just to yeah. further educate Bruce and his firm with design build opportunities coming up. And um, you know, we have some experience you know working as both an owner's rep and on the design side under a contractor in, in other states. So we have that training session coming up. Um, we, you know, Bruce also has a structural designer who will be working on East West, and we're going to do a, a mentoring session with with Vandit to the next couple months. So, you know, that that's ongoing. We we do a, a mentoring session like every other month, uh, and and we'll have a lot of great hands-on training with working on the same project with 994. So, uh, yeah, right. things are things, things are going, and it's going well. So, thanks for uh, giving me a chance to get an update. Thank you very much. Um, Shannon, anything from you guys? Um, we do have three um, consultant service ads right now. So two of them are for like land, real estate, it's services for project will consist of litigation and legal services for eminent domain real estate acquisition. And that's for Waukesha County Airport and Manitowish Waters Airport. So there's two different contracts. Um, and then a third one is for Dodge County Airport. Services required for this project will consist of airport planning. So um, those are all located on our website under consultant service advertisements. If anybody is interested and there's contacts on there as well. Uh, Shannon, would you be able just to drop the link into that main page? Sure. That'd be great. Thanks for sharing. That's really good news. Yeah. That there's opportunities over there. Um, Dave, anything you'd like to say um, outside of ACEC? Uh, no, I, I'm good today. Nothing. Okay, thanks. Del, how about you? Yeah. Sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry about that. No, I have nothing. Thank you. Okay, Ilya. Uh, not too much. Looking forward to the design build presentation. Uh, that's something that we specialize in a lot. And you guys got a big one coming up in Duluth, uh, probably the biggest in the state, a couple billion. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Harvard. No, all good on my end. Um, just looking forward to some of the work we're going to do with Rosalind and uh, the work we're going to do with um, HNTB and their team on that project. Uh, and looking, looking forward, forward to meeting to Ty and uh, getting her up to speed with everything that we're doing. So I will make an appointment with you. You're muted, Ty. Mute button strikes again. <laughs> I said, <laughs> thanks. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Michael. I have nothing to add. Okay. Thank you. Keisha, anything? No. Thank you. Welcome, Ty. Um, looking forward to working with ACTV um, and continuing working with WSDOT. So happy okay. hump day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Keisha. Yes. Kim. I do not have anything to add at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Madalena. Honey, you're muted. So I just learned the trick where you can push the space bar and I practiced it and it didn't work. Um, okay, so um, I guess since we need some time filler. Um, I can just give you some other related WSDOT things that I've been doing um, tangential to consulting, but supports the programs overall. There is a big focus on strategic workforce development. And um, can you 
see hear me okay i see my yeah. screen is like going all weird okay um so strategic workforce development is um, a big focus at WSDOT, but also at Federal Highways. And so there's been more and more attention coming to OBAC on um, the programs that are in place. Um, there are some really great initiatives through HCST, which is Highway Construction Skills Training, um, that replaced the trans program. And so there, there's a lot of work that WSDOT's doing in great ways there, um, including the um, integration of tribal partners. And uh, to that end, Christy Jackson, who is the director for the Tribal Affairs Program, and I will do a webinar for FHWA tomorrow that focuses on the different ways that WSDOT um, works with tribes, because this is pretty um, different than what happens in other states. And so it has gotten a national eye, which again, I'm hoping is gonna be a way to translate into more dollars that can come to the state to, um, to fund these kinds of programs. <laughs> Michael uh, Stoudy's team, he's the, the compliance chief. And um, so some of his team members and I were in Ohio recently at an invitational workshop that looked at strategic workshop uh, workforce development, which is another of the EDC seven or the everyday counts initiatives. Um, ben will be talking about design build, which is um, the other piece for um, EDC7 that is a federal initiative. And so WSDOT generally embraces those. There are quite a few others that WSDOT is involved in beyond that, but two that um, have DBE impact or strategic workforce impact. And uh, so five states were there with us and Ohio hosted and they've got some really great programs that I think uh, that that WSDOT can be looking at also um, to to uh, be doing development not only in the workforce for heavy highway construction, but in consulting as well. Um, some of the programs that Ohio had in particular start very early with kids in elementary schools, um, and they've got a curriculum that's out there, open source. Um, and, you know, anybody can go look at it. You may recall a few years ago, maybe it was only a couple of years ago, um, WSDOT did a program through AASHTO that was focused on STEM and working with um, kids in the Milwaukee Public Schools. Um, I don't know, I don't think anybody on this call was involved with that, but we had talked with ACC at the time as well about um, having engineering resources there because that really seemed like a good way to be getting kids excited about science, engineering, um, specifically how could we start having them look at transportation. Uh, and so there's a great program Ohio has now that WSDOT isn't doing that track program anymore, which I think also has a new name, um, and it was very expensive, there could be some other ways um, to go about that. And then really looking at um, how do you bridge the gap between getting to kids when they're young, something in the middle, you know, when they're in high school, and then currently WSDOT has the HCST and along with the tribal um, partners, but you know, there could be something um, that relates more to those sciences and engineering as uh, as the programs develop. So a little bit there about what we've been doing uh, in strategic workforce. So WSDOT uh, is really doing a great job and um, I, you can expect to hear more about how those programs are developing because um, there's a lot of interest in it right now. All right, did I did I buy enough time, Benji? Yeah, thank you very much for sharing that information. Well, that's great information to hear and, and the uh, advancements that are being made in that, especially when it comes to getting our future engineers involved at such an early age. So I think it's, it's a wonderful program. Um, I did have an exchange with Ben. He'll be here in a minute or two. So that we can jump down to meet all anything to share on your end. Um, I don't have anything to share except maybe a thought. Um, during the DB conference or the summit, I was able to meet with the Department or Bureau of Aviation, BOA, 
for WizDot. And I think the gentleman's name was Shannon. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Jesse. I can't remember. Or, yeah, Jesse's yeah. friend. Yeah, he was there. And I had a nice conversation with him. And one of my conversations with him was that we have done so much work for General Mitchell Airport, GMIA. However, that's not under the umbrella of BOA, and we'd love to expand our opportunities to include other airports throughout Wisconsin, but it's such a tough market to crack because the airport managers are the decision makers, and they don't know about other firms, and they're not open to using other firms because the firms that they use are the ones that they continue to use. Um, so one of the brainstorming things we did was um, to perhaps have DOT, DBE office, do some sort of a networking, like an open session where they would invite some of the airport managers during in a little region and they would give small firms like M Squared the opportunity to like show up what we've already done at General Mitchell and how we can help at other airports. Just yeah. like you said. I think that's a great idea. Um whenever I do networking sessions with consultants interested in airport jobs, um I have, you know, asked around the bureau and the, our director and our director said, you know, they really just need to get to know the airport managers because ultimately it's their decision. We act, we are like a funneling act for the funds that they get, but mm -hmm. um, so they cannot get FAA funds without um, our, you know, funneling the money through us and requests for projects or anything, any kind of requests need to come through us. We do all the approvals and we manage and oversight the projects. General Mitchell is um, compliance wise handled by Milwaukee County, but mm -hmm. uh, all the other projects. Yeah, I, I totally agree that that discussion needs to be had. Um, we hey. We have been talking about this for a long time, and we're seeing somewhat of a decline in even construction bidders. Um, and, you know, the, the airport gets familiar with a consultant, and over time, you know, after doing so many projects or maintenance updates and stuff, they they know the plans they've already had the plans you know the layouts of the airport already and so um you know i have seen a few different um consultant firms working on airports that were selected by the airports but i i agree that we definitely need more diversity there and and more consultative selection for specific contracts I mean, um, the perfect example is West Bend Airport. I've flown mm -hmm. out of there quite a bit. I'm familiar with the airport. I'm a member of the EAA. I tried reaching out to the airport manager over the years, I don't know how many times, as they were doing their airport expansion because their runway extension was going to happen over a creek and some wetlands. And that's that's my gig. I would know exactly what to do. And I couldn't even get his attention, much less have a conversation with him. Okay. So to be put in front of some of these key guys would be really, really valuable. Okay. Uh, we have uh, actually an upcoming seminar. for It's called Land Use and Operations Seminar. And it's for all the airport managers and engineers. Um, they... It, it's a two-day event. I don't know if they they. I, I still believe it's a two-day event. Um, but that's where you can do some networking. Um, that's a great opportunity to meet all the airport managers, and it we do have like FAA come in and say, you know, what's allowed, what's not allowed. I mean, there's interesting presentations, but that would probably for this group be the most beneficial um, outreach and opportunity seminar or, you know, conference that we hold. Um, we have an engineer's workshop where it's BOA talking with engineering and professional services uh, firms, but the, um, this land use and operations seminar is with FAA the airport managers, BOA, and any consultant firms who have worked or are interested in work 
for airport contracts. So I'm going to look up the website and drop the link in here as well. It is coming okay, up you. very soon. Thank you so much. That would be great. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. And thanks for that great um, question suggestion. And I see that Benjamin has joined us. So, um, Ben, I will turn it over to you. How are you today? Pretty good. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't rearrange your schedule too much. No, no, we just we're just so, you know, concise and keyed in on everything we're doing. We're just moving along a little bit yeah. faster today. <laughs> so um, everyone, Ben Thompson. Yeah, take it so, away. So um, I am one of the alternative contracting engineers at WISDOT, and I've I've given this sort of overview program overview of design build to the trans act meeting. Um, so we thought it would be good to bring it into this meeting too, because I, I think there's, uh, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Benji, but I don't think there's a ton of overlap between the two, right? Uh, no, no, okay. we have a um, uh, good number of uh, people that attend each meeting, but don't necessarily attend good both. Deal. So, so yeah. So this won't hopefully be uh, repeated for too many people, but um, I just want to give a little bit of an, an overview of how our program works, and it's something that, you know, right now it's a pilot program, um, so it's not a huge part of our <clears throat> of our program, uh, of our construction program, but it is something that exists, and it's something that, you know, if if things uh, continue to go well, there could be more of these pro projects coming out, and there are some projects that are coming out um, fairly soon, so it's something that I think it's good to get get out there into the community and uh, so everybody knows uh, kind of how this works and what's coming. Um, so design build, the background of the program is that it's um, from 19, or 2019 and 2021, we had some legislation that came in uh, to the state statute that uh, sort of required WSDOT to do a, an alternative project delivery uh, pilot program. Uh, and that's the design build, They the, the legislature kind of uh, they gave a fairly narrow definition of what alternative project delivery is and it's it's design build. So um, basically that's just what it sounds like. It's an agreement where we have design and construction under one contract uh, for a project. So that's that's where this push came from, you know, to, to do a different type of contract method. Um, this shows the contract structure you know, design bid build is on the left, design build is on the right. And really this, it, it's a it's a graphic to sh show what that sentence on the last slide said, where we have on the left, you see there's two sets of contracts. One goes to the designer, one goes to the contractor. They don't work on the same team. You know, here under the design build, we have one contract that goes to the, to the de design builder, who is usually the contractor. And then they'd have the de design consultants and any of their subcontractors on subcontracts. So they they do work as a team in this in this structure. So why would WISDOT want to have projects going design build? Um, some of the benefits that we see coming from it is this condensed time frame. Um, design and construction can kind of overlap, which speeds up the overall project potentially. Uh, you could have efficiencies in the design and the construction because the two entities work as a team. Um, they're working in the same direction rather than kind of um, putting checks on each other. So uh, the way that we do it in a traditional project. So we have sort of a, uh, a pulling together kind of mentality and it, it can can lead to efficiencies and also the interaction and the input that the contractor gets early on. Um, in the design can give us some possibilities of innovations that we can see in projects that we might not see in a regular uh, design bid build environment. One of the big things that people like about design build is the idea that you can optimize how you allocate your risks. So risks that are best dealt with by the department can be kept by the department and risks that are best dealt with by the contractor can go to the contractor contractor can price those risks and can then man manage them. And the, the theory is that that's going to be more efficient than us managing them for the contractor and vice versa. And then the last thing here um, that I have on the list is what design competition. This is kind of relevant to situations where we'd have a project where WISDOT either 
doesn't have a lot of experience with the project type or um, doesn't have one so set solution that seems to be the best possible solution. You know, maybe we have multiple choices of how we could design and build something. Um, and this gives us a chance to have designers um, do a little bit of com competition for the, with their ideas to give us the best plan to move forward with the project that we might not know how to do otherwise. Uh, this just kind of formalizes some of those goals that I um, that I mentioned on the last slide. You know, we like to look at projects where we could have a closure that we could shorten and then we could have impact on, on traffic volumes or long detours or impacts to businesses. You know, those are places we'd like to see shorter projects potentially. Accelerated scheduled date, meaning we could start it sooner. Um, that would be in a situation where we see safety improvements that are needed or if we have deterioration that's moving faster than we expected. Uh, if we have unusual constructability issues or difficult designs, you know, again, if we have a lot of those multiple solutions that are possible, design build is, can be a good choice for those types of situations. Um, anytime when we have, we think we have in opportunities for innovative ideas or if early contractor input is a thing that could really improve our project outcomes, design build could be a consideration. Um, we generally would want to do these on projects that are still early in design. We wouldn't want to start with a project that's already past 30% because um, you know, you're already kind of into that definition phase where you're sort of finding out some of the innovation that's possible. And then we also look for projects that are either simple or, or at least well defined in some of the really tricky areas like railroads and real estate and utilities and environmental issues. And we also want to make sure we're we're looking at projects where we have, you know, interest and capacity for people to, to do the work. This is a schematic of just how the process kind of differs from a traditional design bid build project. On the top there, we have our regular process uh, where we do our planning scoping. We get a designer, we do the design, then we advertise and bid, and then we get a, con a con contractor on board. Well, we find out what our cost is going to be there, but when we do the bidding. Um, the bottom one here is the design build process where we do we do kind of stretch out that scope in RFP development phase. Uh, we call that it, it, it's sort of a preliminary design scoping overlap. Um, we end up getting to where we can issue an RFP, which is a request for proposals. <clears throat> and that's where we do this advertisement period uh, where proposals are developed and then we get our proposals in and select a design builder and now we have design and construction that can overlap. So you can see this, it's just a schematic view, but this is sort of that savings here um, that we would see from, from a traditional project. And some of the responsibilities um, in a design build project, it's not a it's not a lot different than a regular project, but you do have you know scoping and RFP plans, which is sort of analogous to an, a preliminary design is still in the WISDOT column. Um, sometimes we have consultants working on that, so it's not just WISDOT, but uh, the WISDOT is, is the responsible party for that. Same with the environmental document. Uh, same with real estate acquisition and most of the utility coordination, or a lot, at least the preliminary utility coordination stays with WISDOT. The final design now goes to the design builder, and then WISDOT takes this review and acceptance piece of the design and, and holds on to that portion of it. Permits are kind of a joint venture. Um, if we can get them ourselves before we get a design builder on board, that's great. Um, sometimes it's going to be the case where the design builder is going to have to work with us to get permits, um, specifically like environmental type permits. And then construction is obviously on the design builder. That's not different really than a normal project, but and the construction oversight and inspection stays with WISDOT. Uh, again, not really different than a regular project. So the process that we follow. Uh, when we do a design build project at WISDOT, uh, we or a design consultant would develop those proposal requests for proposal plans, the plans and the design that go into the document that the design builders use to propose uh, their solution to us. Um, we would com WISDOT would complete an environmental document. We would work on getting the real estate obtained. We would start the utility coordination and we would start working on the permits. Um, once that part is complete, 
there's a two-step procurement process for the design builder that is kind of mandata mandated in our statute. Uh, it includes a request for qualifications, which is an RFQ, and a request for proposals, which is an RFP. And I'll kind of go through those two steps in a little more detail. Um, so the RFQ, the request for qualifications, leads to a submittal of an SOQ, which is our statement of qualifications. And the design build teams, uh, the people that are the teams that are interested in pursuing the project, put in these SOQ submittals, and WISDOT will score them to determine which teams are the best qualified out of the the SOQ received. And we then are able to shortlist between two and four uh, teams that would then move on to the phase two of the procurement. And what we look at in the SOQ evaluation, I mean, this is it can be very project specific, but generally speaking, we look at organization of the team and the experience of the team, you know, the, the personnel, what kinds of projects the personnel have worked on, um, the approach to the managing this design build project, how the team looks to be integrating design and construction. Um, that's sort of the newest piece of this, you know, that's different from our traditional project. So that's kind of a piece where I think some people might struggle when they put their proposals together or their SOQs together. So that's kind of an important one to, to focus on, um, just how, how the team understands that this is process, process is different. And then some past project examples, some uh, uh, examples of when projects have used successful schedule and cost control, and then also a system for accountability in the design build project, which kind of really consists of design and qu construction quality and then environmental um, quality and environmental um, impact. So once we have that short list of two to four, um, those shortlisted firms or teams then receive a request for proposals from WISDOT. And the RFP contains the final design requirements. So what needs to be the requirements that need to be met by the designer. Um, how we would like to see the proposals and the bids developed, the schedule of how that's all going to happen, um, the alternative technical concept process, and that's a new term too uh, that's specific to design builds, and we'll talk about that on its own slide in a minute because that's really one of the big differences in the process. Um, and then stipend information. So the unsuccessful proposers are able to request or able to accept a stipend from WISDOT for their proposal work. Um, and that happens uh, in the in the RFP phase. There's also the terms and conditions of the contract, kind of equivalent to our our spec book, the first part of our spec book. The technical requirements for the project, which is sort of equivalent to what our special provisions would would be uh, communicating in a traditional project, and then the standards that need to be followed uh, for the design of the project and construction of the project. There's also something called reference information documents, and this is really just our preliminary design or our conceptual design. It includes things like the survey information and the and soil borings if we have those and um, the plan sheets that we would put together to kind of to communicate the design intent that we have for the project. And then just instructions on how those things get uh, submitted to, to WISDOT. So before we go to RFP, we tend, we would like to have um, those we'd have to have the RFP level design and plans done. That's something that just has to be in the RFP. We'd like to have an improved environmental document, and we, we really need to have that before we go to RFP as well. Real estate acquired, or at least we know when that's going to happen. Uh, same with utilities. We maybe don't have the relocations completed, but we know what needs to move and, and when we're, we're going to get started doing that. Uh, and then the permit issues with the concurrence letter from DNR, the water quality certification and the and the 404 permit. Uh, ideally, we'd have those at the time when the RFP is posted to the shortlisted firms. And I said we'd talk a little bit about alternative technical concepts. That's what what this slide is about. Um, these are developed during the proposal development phase. So while the design build teams are developing their proposals to submit to WISDOT, um, they will come across innovative ideas that they've had that maybe fall outside what's allowed in the RFP. Um, they're, uh, they're able to propose those to the WISDOT team uh, before they put in their proposals. Uh, so these, these ideas can be evaluated by WISDOT 
they can be accepted or rejected. Sometimes they don't qualify as an ATC if they're actually already allowed in the RFP or if um, they're outside of uh, our standards. We can accept them uh, or reject them based on on basically how we how our technical personnel view the impact on our project. They need to be at least as good or better than what we would have gotten uh, from what was in the RFP. So once we've accepted those, uh, if the design build team wants to include them in their final proposal, they can do that. They can put them in their technical proposal and then also use them uh, when they put together their cost proposals. So what comes in a design build proposal? Um, the technical proposal, it, it, you know, the specifics would vary based on what we ask for and what type of procurement we're, we're going to use uh, in the project, but they'll all have conceptual designs. They'd have any of their innovative features that the teams came up with, like the ATCs. Uh, they'd have features of the design uh, that they want to highlight, uh, traffic management plans, durations of closures, if that's something we ask for, their environmental compliance plan, uh, also their quality plan is in there. An org chart, you know, to see how the design and construction pieces are interacting, their progress schedule plan, and uh, sometimes we'll ask for a completion date if we don't necessarily specify that. And then there's also types of design build where they could provide us with um, an amount of work that they're proposing to complete. So, that's the technical piece of the proposal. And then the cost proposal is really just a lump sum cost uh, for design and construction. So it's uh, generally a only a few items um, and the items are, are large, like bridge, roadway, um, that sort of item. It's not the, the itemized uh, list that we normally would have in a design bid build project. Those proposals are scored by WISDOT. There's different ways to determine who the successful proposer is, and we've got um, three of them that are in our state statute that we, we need to try during our pilot program. Um, and once we've done that, we then are able to award the design build contract to the, the team with the highest score. That's when then the, design, the final design would begin. Once we've awarded um, the contract, there are still places where WISDOT has review authority and can check in with the designer and the contractor as to how things are being uh, prosecuted. So we would still have a DSR that would be submitted. WISDOT would review that and approve it. Then there's the release for construction plans. That's more or less the final plan uh, submittal that WISDOT would also review and, and accept. And also then the ECIP plans for erosion control that still need to be accepted and approved. And then we would have normal types of construction inspection that go on at a project. So that's kind of the, the process uh, of how the projects go in at WISDOT. This is a summary of kind of what we've been doing under that pilot program, and then also what we hope to have coming up here in the next, the next year or two or three. Um, I mentioned it was currently still a pilot pro program, so we have the six projects that the statute allows or requires. Um, we have one complete, we have one under construction, we have one that was canceled and returned to the design bid build program, and then we also have three that are more or less uh, under procurement now. They're just getting underway. We also have the Blotnick Bridge project. That's a Minnesota DOT project. Uh, but it goes on all our slides because it's it's large. So College Avenue, this is the one that's complete. Uh, this was in Appleton on State Highway 125. It was a, a box culvert replacement. It was finished up last fall. Uh, the construction finished last fall, so it was opened up to traffic. I think it was less than two months of closure uh, that they went through, so we we feel like we saved a fair amount of time on this project. Lone Rock is in the southwest region. It's uh, west of Madison, uh, crossing the Wisconsin River. That one is in progress. Uh, that one was awarded in uh, 2022, and we are looking to have the bridges open at the end of this summer, 
and the old bridges then will get demolished next summer or over the winter and, and into next summer. Then we have three of the potential future projects and we call them potential just because there's always there's always chances a roadblock can pop up and they go back to a regular project at least until they're you know far enough along to to stand on their own but these are the ones that we're pursuing right now there's a pavement preservation project in the north central region that is going under what we call our fixed price variable scope procurement method I'll talk a little bit about that on the next slide. It's just a different way of, of selecting the, the successful contractor. Same with the low bid version, which is what the Southwest Region 994 project is at the Cranberry Interchange. So that's a low bid design build project. And then we have one more best value project, which is uh, what most people think of when they think of design build. It's the technical cost, technical plus cost proposals that then are added together and, and give a, a winner. Um, and that one is in Jefferson County. It's uh, two sets of bridges over the uh, over rivers on the interstate. So these are those three types. There's best value, low bid, and fixed price variable scope. The two projects we have completed so far are the best value type, and that's really where the winning proposal has that best combined score on technical and cost proposals. And there's the low bid type, which is the Cranberry Interchange upcoming. Um, in this case, the technical proposals aren't scored. They're just reviewed to make sure they meet or exceed the requirements that we had set. And then the lowest price uh, is the winner for that project, just like on a, on a traditional project. The fixed price variable scope is a little different. In this one, there's generally, uh, we start, we'll set a price uh, for the contract, and then there'll be a variable scope where the contractors or the design build teams will essentially submit a a reverse bid where they tell us how many miles or how many pieces they can do for the fixed price that we have in the in the contract and then the proposal that has the largest scope of work would would win that contract so there's a project going on in wausau or not going on but um in planning up in wausau it's actually a couple of projects that have been sort of uh welded together there's a pre pavement preservation piece, and then there's a bridge overlay place piece. So this is the fixed price variable scope project we are uh, experimenting with as the as required by the legislation that we have. It's going to repair some joints in the concrete pavement, replace some slab pieces, um, redo some asphalt shoulders, and then do some guardrail replacement as well. So under this fixed price variable scope method, um, we have we're setting what we call baseline the baseline work so every design build team will have to submit a proposal that includes the concrete pavement rehabilitations the joint repairs then there's the variable scope that will be added onto that so we have about 14 polymer bridge overlays that are in the same corridor in the same area and the winner then of this uh, proposal of this project would be the proposal that comes in with the concrete rehabilitation work and the most polymer overlays that they can fit into the cost that we put in the in the RFP. So we're looking here to get sort of a maximum quantity of of work done with a uh, at our specified price. And we're hoping that there can be some construction efficiencies that come into play there and also some traffic control uh, efficiencies where we don't have to close the road down three different times for for th uh, projects that are all basically in the same corridor. The second one is the Cranberry Interchange project. That's the low bid project. Um, this is a fairly straightforward replacement of two bridges uh, on the interstate over interstate ramps where the 90 and 94 come together near Toma. Uh, this is the low bid design build project where we would get uh, a technical proposal that meets or exceeds our criteria and then the, the lowest cost would win the project. And this one is, is a project where we look at potential efficiencies in construction. Potentially, we can decrease the schedule and also we can have uh, a design builder that is able to coordinate with permitting agencies for some of the cranberry bogs and wetlands that are around this project. And finally, then the third one that's in the pipeline here is the Jefferson County Resiliency Project. This is a project on I-94 uh, east of Madison to replace some structures over the Rock and Crawfish Rivers. It's also a flooding 
uh, mitigation project. There's been flooding in this area that's caused the interstate to close in the past, and so this project would look at how we're we're able to um, prevent that from happening in the future, and what what sorts of adjustments can be made to that roadway in between the bridges that will allow us to have a more resilient highway there. So that added flood resiliency and some of those solutions that maybe are innovative are one of the things that we're looking at getting out of this project is design build. There's also hopefully construction efficiencies, you know, to keep the road closed or open open as much as possible and then to avoid some of the impacts to the waterways and the environmental areas around the bridges. And then finally, there's that uh, Minnesota DOT led Blotnik bridge program or project. This is a, a large project there. Are, they are uh, putting they have put out their request for letters of interest uh, and it's on the Minnesota website. I think we have a link on our website that can take you there too. So if anybody's looking to get involved in that project, um, they are starting to take those letters of interest. And just to give kind of an idea of schedules, you know, right now these these are still kind of in flux, but the the North Central Region project is probably uh, the furthest along and the and the closest to being. Uh, set as a set schedule, so those would have an RFQ coming out the end of this summer um, with the contract coming out probably next spring. The others then would be a year or so later um, following after that. And so. How do we how do we think about DBE with design build and. One of the things with the first two projects that we did, we did have design uh, D DBE goals in the design build projects. But we've been informed, I guess, uh, from other states and from federal highways that that the design build projects can be a little bit difficult for subcontractors in general and for DBEs in particular um, because they're often asked to bid or to cost jobs without final design. So it makes it a little bit tricky when they're having to put in costs and they don't even know necessarily what the design is. It also makes it tricky for the design builders who might not even know which DBE work types they are going to need in a project because they haven't done final design yet. So Federal Highways has what they call their Everyday Counts Initiative. They've developed something called, or not developed, but I guess they've um, collected best practices on what they call an open-ended performance plan. And this is a modified DBE commitment plan where the proposer basically can um, at the time of proposal can submit work types uh, that they anticipate for DB participation. They can also uh, include commitments, but the commitments aren't necessarily required at that point in the process. They can be required later in the um, in the procurement process uh, up to really when they are given notice to proceed with construction. So. It's only for use on design build projects. Uh, we've been working here at Wistot to get a pilot of this system working for our next three upcoming design build projects. Um, that's still kind of under construction right now, but we're hoping to have it in time to do uh, for the WASA project this summer. So um, that's kind of a new thing that, that maybe is going to take some getting used to. Uh, for us and for for everybody, maybe even on this call. So that's some something to, to watch out for. And I think if we once we do get this completed, we'll probably have to do another uh, presentation just on that at some point. So uh, that kind of wraps up my design build talk. Um, Christine and I are the design build engineers or alternative contracting engineers for Wistot, and we do have a, a page on the doing business, uh, a link on the doing business page from Wistot that talks about the design build projects we have. Um, so I think I kept it in the right time frame, but if we have questions, I Benji, you can you can do the you can cut me off if you need to, but um, I'm I'm happy to answer questions if anybody has them. No, we're good for time. Um, great presentation. Please if anyone has questions, this is a great opportunity to get some clarification. I am pretty thorough, so uh. you are. I was just <laughs> going to say you pretty much left no stone unturned here. Um, 
OK, I'm not seeing any hands or any questions in the chat. Um, thank you very much for putting this together and presenting for us today. A lot of great information and um, I think um, can we make this available? Yeah, yep. to the participants in the meeting. OK, great. And then maybe yep. they'll have some other questions generated, um, you know, after being able to review it and checking out the website as well. Yeah, so Christine thank and I are, you. are always here to answer questions and we really, you know, we really encourage people to kind of get involved in this because we hope this program will take off and and become a bigger pro part of our program. It's not never going to, you know, take over design bid build, but um, we hope it'll at least keep going and and it would be nice to have uh, DBE firms that are experienced with it as we go forward. So um, just making a plug for us. Great. great. Thank you. Thank Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, so if there are no questions on that, I think what I'm going to do is just keep going down the list for any final comments and then we'll wrap up the meeting. Uh, Kathleen, I believe you were next. Did you have anything else to share? Nope, nothing further. Thank you. Mitch? Nothing else for me. Thank you. OK, Randy, I see you're back on after you got kicked off. Anything to share with us? Any comments? You are muted in the event you are talking. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Madalena had uh, mentioned uh, strategic workforce planning, and uh, mm -hmm. I've been sitting in several meetings at the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewers District on a uh, EPA plan and that involves workforce and PRISM is involved in the lateral replacements in Milwaukee. And I brought up the need to connect these opportunities and needs for workers because lay laterals is going to use a lot of laborers and needs plumbers but hell i'd go crazy if i was doing that for five years uh and there's a need to take people that are doing simple lay lateral laborers kind of work moving maybe into highway construction and other things that may be needed in the industry and for most of our work vertical construction because we're suffering right now from a lack of work construction workers Okay. Just needs to be a, a lot more collaboration between the large agencies that have projects so that there is a coordination and a systematic way to train workers that are starting literally at the ground floor doing lead lateral replacement. Have you talked with any of the unions and seen if there are any, um, you know, well, we always go back to. Well, Pardon? laborers and WRT Big P Big Step are involved in the discussions with the sewage district, and uh, but they aren't connecting this together because they're not they're not the complete decision makers on many of the me mega projects that are about to start. And Milwaukee is having a affordable housing boom. Frankly, in our 29 years. We have only been involved in one affordable housing project. We have four of them right now in the city of Milwaukee and in Wauwatosa. It's just housing is going crazy and we need construction workers, particularly electricians. OK, um, well, you know, I might suggest that you reach out to um, Maggie Givings because she um, from our labor compliance leg. Um, she has a lot of uh, she's been doing a lot of work in that area and she might be able to um, help, you know, with some suggestions or what they're currently doing. As you know, we're doing HCST, which is, you know, more horizontal, but there might be other um, agencies and other um, um, industry leaders and things that are, are doing plans uh, you know, or programs. So if you wanted to reach out to Maggie and see what we're doing on our side and how it can filter over. Um, that, that would be great. I'd love to connect Maggie with what's happening here because again, we are we're uh, uh, just a, 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 a small part of the overall discussion. And these meetings are taking place on the regular and there's millions upon millions of dollars that are being spent. And they're all needing construction workers and there is a career ladder that is starting. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. How about this? Um, Randy, what I'll do is I'll send you her email with a brief introduction. Great. Um, and then you guys can connect and see where it goes. Sounds good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for bringing that up. Roslyn, anything you would like to share before we uh, close out? No, thanks. I have nothing to share. Thank you. Thank you. Anna? Nope, I don't have anything else. Uh, welcome, Ty. Okay. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Thank you. Marquise? I do, I do not have anything. Thanks. Okay, um, so I am going to turn it back over to Ty for some a quick minute of final uh, comments. Um, but before doing that, are there any other special events or meetings that are coming up that you guys would like to share with the group? And if there are, you can put the information in uh, the chat box if there's a link or a date. Um, you know, with Shannon uh, for the BOA. That was excellent. You know, I think a lot of people will be able to uh, um, that might not have known about it or attended and take the opportunity to attend. So if there's anything else you guys have coming up, um, go ahead and put it in the chat box. And if you want to give it a little plug, now's your time. Um, do, would you like me to put on construction projects? Because they do come with several consultant contracts, but those are usually established prior to the construction activity um for this for for this this is the um consultant so if it if yeah. you have some that are more uh directly related to consultant you can just put that and i'm sure once they get into the website if they want to dive in further yeah um, they okay. can do that but no i put that. in the um the two links there that i think would be the most beneficial for the group Okay, thank you so much for that. Yeah. Okay, so seeing no hands and hearing no other plugs for upcoming events, Ty, if yeah. you'd like to just do some closing comments and then sure. I'll adjourn the meeting. Well, thank you for hosting, Benji. I think you did an awesome job doing that. Thank you. Um, ben, thank you for your very informative presentation today. Um, I learned quite a bit. And, and again, thank you all for your comments and the information that you provided. Um, I had a couple of questions, but Benji, I'll meet with you later about that, just so I don't take up too much of everyone's time. Um, so yeah, I I look forward to to really just being a part of this group and learning more about each of you. Um, I am available um, at the time right now. I am asking that everyone attach Tandra to emails if you have any specific questions relating to um, anything that I would be overseeing in this position. But um, other than that, I, I really don't have much to say. But thank you, um, and just looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ty, and again, welcome to the DBE program. Um, Kathleen, you'll be sending out minutes and all that fun stuff, at, you know, at, at your regular schedule. Um, and the next meeting for TransCAC is listed for July 24th, I believe, at the same time. Um, if you guys have anything you would like um, put to the agenda, please feel free to send it to Kathleen, if that's okay with you, Kathleen. Okay, great. And thank you for everybody participating. And um, again, we do welcome Ty and um, for all of the input and participation today. And Ben, thank you again for joining. I think he might've dropped off, um, but you all have a great week and weekend and you get about 20 minutes back to, in your day. So thank you so much, you guys. Thank you all. Thanks, Benji. Thank you. All right, Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.